Hello everybody. In this presentation, we're going to walk you through the steps to set up a game using the PTS 900 platform. While we have set this up so that the steps are fairly intuitive to walk through, we still thought it would be worthwhile to go through the game setup and hopefully answer any questions that may come up when you uh, experience this hands-on for the first time. We cannot stress enough that when you begin setting up your precision time system that you double check and make sure you are using the correct power supply. As you know many power supplies actually have similar connectors. All the power supplies that come from us or have been returned for summer service should have the label as shown. If you have not sent your power supply in Make sure that it is rated for 5 volts as shown in this picture. Using the wrong power supply will damage the motherboard and cause you to have to send the system in for repairs. When power is applied correctly to the base station, you will notice that the LED ring around the power on button will illuminate. Simply hit the button and this should begin the boot up process for the precision time base station. The complete boot up time should be somewhere around 60 seconds or one minute. If you notice that at about two thirds of the way through the boot up process, you'll notice that the LED light between the start and stop buttons will change to red. This is part of the normal boot up procedure. So when the boot up is complete, the first screen you will see is the one as shown, which allows you to select the teams that are playing in your game. The home team should be the same team that was the home team the last time the base station was started up. And by tapping on the icon for the away team, you can select either from the list of teams that are already populated, or if you're playing a team you have not played before, if you go back and hit the add new team icon, you can select and bring up the keyboard and enter a team name as shown. Let me point out that in, in both this, this entry mode and for the officials, it doesn't uh, accept any symbols or hyphens. So when you advance to the next screen, you can do the same thing for the timekeeper, the officials, and notice that in this base station we have a, a pretty extensive list of referees and here I'm having a little trouble with the, with the uh, pointer, so I'll use my finger. So notice we selected three referees, and now again, if you need to add a new official, you can go into that prompt, and it brings up the keyboard. And again, I'll mention that it does not accept any hyphens or spaces, so you need to uh, modify those entries a little bit to accommodate for that. To assign a belt pack to a referee, type the select belt pack icon for the official as shown, and you notice the icons will come up, and you can select or assign a belt pack. If you notice here, the belt packs that have already been assigned are dark, so you cannot select them more than once. When you hit the continue button, it'll forward you to a summary screen so you can kind of see what you've done, the teams that are playing, the three referees, and what belt packs you've assigned. If you notice that if you need to go back and reassign an official, you can go to the Change Officials icon and it'll get you back to the previous page where you could, uh, say, reassign a belt pack if you find one's not working. Then by hitting the Continue button, it gets you to the main screen, which is the screen that the timekeeper will see while play is going on. We will cover other details like how to set up the belt packs and for the referee calibration process in a separate video. For any additional questions about the contents of this presentation, please use the contact information shown above. We thank you again for your support of Precision Time.